One of the things I, I love to do, one of my favorite things I love to do, is I love getting in a car and just driving, especially places I've never been before. So I, I, I discovered this in college, and I, and I actually have some of my, uh, have my parents watching this. And so my stepmother had a Honda Accord. It was a stick shift. And so, uh, man, that, that little thing could go, and, and I went in with it. Sorry about how fast I went in your car. Uh, but anyway, and so, but one of my favorite roads to drive down, we lived off a of Highland Road in Baton Rouge. And so I would love on, on just days uh, where it was kind of cool outside. I would get in there. It had a sunroof, and I'd put the seat back. I'd turn the radio up, and I would just go drive all the way down Highland Road till hit I-10, and just and drive. That was back way before it was really developed. It was just starting, and so I just would love to go and just just be in the car and just get away and just see my community. I was born in Baton Rouge, love Baton Rouge, love our entire area, and so I would just go look at homes and just drive around. And I have loved it ever since of just getting my car and driving and seeing things I've never seen. So it's been fun uh, living out here the last seven years because every now and then Aggie and I get in the car and, and we start, one of the ways we visit, and we just go drive down roads we've never been down. It's really cool. Sometimes they're a little, little different roads. So anyway, some we turn around real quick and we come back. And so, um, but I love, and one of the things I love looking at doing, I love looking at houses. I love it. And, and college, I actually started out in, uh, or in high school, I took three years of design and drafting, two, year of that, two years of that was in architecture. I love looking at homes and buildings, uh, spent uh, nearly 20 years of my career in banking and mortgages and real estate, and I love looking at homes, different homes, I love looking at buildings, and I love just driving around, so uh, we spent... A uh, week before last and some of last week going to Florida. And so we just basically did a tour of Florida. We went places we had never been before. My whole life I've been going to Florida to the beach and to Disney World. But that's kind of really about all I've seen, a couple of areas. And so we got to go to areas we hadn't seen before. We went to Jacksonville and St. Augustine and Atlantic Beach. And then I uh, got to see parts of Orlando we had not seen, Daytona Beach. And by the way, man, where they have the Daytona race, that thing's massive. I thought Tiger Stadium was big. Man, I don't even compare. This thing goes on for like a mile. It, it's pretty incredible. And so got to see that. That was really cool. And, and, and we would just take time to drive around. We didn't really do a lot of things, but we just saw, and I love it. I could spend hours in a car just driving around, seeing homes, seeing different communities, and so, and one of the things I also love to do is just go to church, look at churches. I love when I have an opportunity to go to a different church, just walk around and see. I just love how do they do it. And sometimes it's during the service. How do they do worship? How do the speakers do things? How do the ushers do things? And how they do their lights and their speakers? I just, I'm like a little kid when I get in there. I was looking all around. And so we got to go to some other churches during our, our four weeks away and and, and I got to just see it. Sometimes we, I'll go places, like with, especially when stuff's going on, like probably where I shouldn't go. In fact, one church we went to um, is, is a church we're, we're going to get connected with. I've been wanting to go there for years. We got to go on a Sunday morning. It was a, one of the first churches we visited. And so afterwards, we're walking around, and we need to use the, the restroom. And, but we saw this little hallway, so we're like inquisitive. Nobody's around. And it said, don't enter, private entry, staff only. Guess what we did? We went in. You know what I'm saying? And so I went in. We found a restroom. Well, the pastor that kind of knew me, he, he saw me. He's like, what you doing back here? Uh. <laughs> so anyway, so it was awesome. But I love just looking around. But you know what? As much as I love doing that, it's not home. Those houses I look at, which are really cool, it's not my house in my community. And those churches I love going to, it's not my church. My church. And so on our way back, uh, last couple of days, it was just two days of traveling, about uh, 12, 13 hours of driving. And, and coming back home, my mind was just experiencing all that we had seen, but my heart was here. My heart was here. We were ready to see our family we had been missing. Uh, but I was ready to just be home to my church. And I've got, a, I've got this screen behind me, kind of a little artistic view of the front of our church. Because um, I miss my church. I miss my church. But on that 12-hour ride back, I just was just thinking about my church, my church. So this morning, the title of the message is, 
let me tell you about my church. As I thought about my church this morning, let me tell you what, 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 what I came to. See, at my church, enthusiasm is a priority. In other words, we joyfully get behind all that God is doing here. And God has been. Look, we're, we're come September, we're going to be here eight years. Eight years, somebody. Some of y'all have been here from the beginning. Eight years. Man, it's just flown by. And, and you know what I've loved? Our people have always gotten behind what God is doing because God has always been doing something. We've never been a dead church. We've never been going, where's God? Man, we wish stuff would happen. Stuff is always happening look and we were singing that song earlier about miracles happening what got me so emotional is I had faces with every one of those things of relationships being restored marriages being restored God healing we've seen healing when we prayed I mean we've seen it all right here and I love our people just get behind all that God is doing there's a joy when we walk in the room I hear it all the time when new people come and say they walk in and there's like just joy here and, and, and friendliness. There's an enthusiasm here. That's my church. If y'all could put that point up for me at my church, enthusiasm. I want you to see a verse. It's Ephesians 6, 7. It says this. It says, work with enthusiasm. That's important because what we do here is work. Okay, it is work. There, it is a job. So this morning I was getting ready to do my job this morning. There were responsibilities I had. But man, how, how sad it would be if, if me and our team who served, we just kind of came in going, yeah, getting at work, clunk, punch my clock. Man, it's gonna, I got to get up there and preach today. You know, man, I'm going to get, get it done. I'm going to get my job done and go home later, take a nap. Man, that would be no fun, all right? Half of y'all would leave. You're like, this place is no fun. I'm leaving. There's no enthusiasm here. I would too. I'll follow you with you. Man, there's enthusiasm. Why? Because we're working for the Lord. Come on, somebody. This is God's work. We get to do it. We get to be. We get to work and do what we do in the presence of Almighty God. He's here with us. It's not like we're trying to get here. He's with us. And he's doing great things. And I love the enthusiasm at my church. Also at my church, hospitality is a priority. If you're taking notes, you go right next to it, friendliness. We've always been known as a friendly church. We're, we're hospitable. What do we do? We welcome and embrace everybody. Everybody. And we do it with a smile on our face. Just like we're seeing a friend. Man, some of y'all each week, man, you had not seen your friend in a few days. Man, you smile. Go, man, I get to catch up with them. We do that with everybody. We are not a cold church. We're not a distant church. We have love in our hearts and smiles on our faces that we just show when people come. But there's words behind it, which is true love and high grace. Okay. Sometimes we've had people come here we know, and we know their, their tough background. We know they may have not been the, the best of people in what they do. That's not our issue, other than helping that part of their life to go away through the power of Jesus. Our response isn't, I know who you are, and I know what you do. I know where you live. We don't do that. See, when people come to my church, what do we do? Hey, good morning. It's so good to see you. That's why we don't have a dress code here, by the way. Come, come like you want to come. Whatever your style is, maybe you want to dress up, great. If you want to wear shorts and your sandals, great. That's the last thing we care about. I was so discouraged. I heard somebody recently that the Lord has opened a door for me to kind of minister to. And they, they talked about going to another church. And they said they walked in. And, and, and in that church, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to give it away. They, they kind of had made known the, I'll say the conditions to be a part of that church. We got one condition to come here. Breathing. 
We, no, I tell you about that's, that's not even true. That's not true because if you're dead, we'll do the funeral for you. So you can come in, even if you're dead. We'll have you, in fact, we'll put you right up front if you're dead. So anyway, uh, but uh, you know, you know we, have, we, we put one label on people, one label. And sometimes we're bad at putting labels. But here at the church, my church, we put one label on people, beloved. Because they are the beloved of God because Jesus gave his life for them not just for us. We are not a club going, Jesus is for us. No, Jesus is for them. And guess what? We let them know when they show up going, we just, we just love you. We're just glad you're here. In fact, we don't use words like, where have you been? Boy, you haven't been here in a while. Where you been? With that judgmental tone like, you ain't been in church. We don't do that. We go, hey, it's just great to see you. I'm so glad you're here this morning. You just made my day. We're, we're so much better because you're here. And you know, I was, something was missing before you got here. And that now, now, it's, now we're complete because you arrived. That's my church. That's how we do things. Another thing about my church is family is a priority. When I say family, that's not just families in our homes. That's us as a church family. Our family is a priority. And you know what we look forward to do is we get to, we love just spending time together. In fact, we're excited about it. Why? Because we just want to build new friendships. Sometimes people are kind of closed going, I don't want to meet anybody new. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to let them in. It, does it take a lot to let people in your life? Yeah, you got to open your mouth and go, hey, how you doing? I'm Randy. And look, I'm one, I'm not a good person to just, I'm not talkative. I'm just not. So I talk up here, and this is where I know God has a sense of humor. He put me up here to talk. If you ever get me alone, I, it's like crickets. I'm like, because my brain is empty. I'm going, I don't know what to say. So I've kind of learned. So I just get to know people going, well, what do you do? Where do you live? Well, where are you from? And just get to know them a little bit. Wow, I love meeting new people. And just, just spending time with them, hanging out. We got to have at our, our French Settlement community group last night, just people hanging out. So Aggie and I got to sit with a dear couple that we've known for years in our church journey and just got to talk about things like our honeymoons and going on cruises and talking about our trips and talking about life and talking about all our friends that we have together. It was so fun. I left there going, I almost didn't want to leave. I'm like, I, I got to get ready for today. So I got church, got a meeting afterwards. I, I need to make sure I'm ready. But I didn't want to end. I was just having so much fun talking with friends of ours. And that's what my church is. We're a family. We just love spending time together. In fact, we find ways to spend time together. We don't need a church putting together events to spend time together. We're just going to do it because my church is a family. Something else about my church I want you to know is that generosity is a priority. We cheerfully give our first and our best. Why? Because we want to make sure God's kingdom is moving forward, that it's advancing into darkness where light is busting through. So we're just generous to make sure that here is a place where people can come and meet Jesus and experience him on a Sunday morning at other events. But we're also generous to make sure places like Plazuela and Israel are taken care of. And so I'll tell you, exciting. Oh, we've recently started supporting um, a ladies' home where ladies can come and be protected. Your generosity is going toward that. Your generosity is going to make sure we have a food pantry that's never lacking. In fact, we're going to be wondering, how do we build new buildings to hold the food? Because our people are so generous. They're not stingy. They're not selfish. That's my church. This verse describes my church. It said God loves a person who gives cheerfully. See, at my church, people give cheerfully. They, they look forward uh, to giving. They look forward to moving forward. Y'all put 2 Corinthians 9, 7 up for me. They do that. And then look, but look what happens. I love this about God. God's so good, by the way. He's saying, look, I want somebody who cheerfully gives. But let me tell you about my part. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give back to you generously. I'm going to provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need. I'm going to take care of it. 
If you just pour into people's lives generously, you just give, I'm going to make sure you've got not just plenty, you're even going to have leftover going, I don't know what we do with this. See, that's my church, you, you do that. And then verse 11 says, yes, you will be enriched in every way so you can always be generous. See, God wants generous people so he can pour into them stages to be generous more. But you know what? That's my church. I see it directly because I, I, I help manage the finances. I see your generosity. And I, I'm, I'm often, during my times during the week, I'm emotional seeing what you do. I'm overwhelmed. I have moments sometimes where I have to just stop and go, my God, they're so generous. I've watched people give when they had little to nothing, but they were faithful in giving. I've watched people that, that work because of just challenges. The work hasn't been there, but they constantly give. And I just take moments and just go, my God, I know their story. We should be giving to them, but they're giving to the church? But what excites me is that's my church. That describes my church. I saw there's a church that I love, and I listen to this pastor all the time, and, 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 and they're just a model for other churches. They, they have these core values that drive everything they do. And I want you to read one of them, because I, I love it so much. It says this. It says, we give up things we love for things we love even more. What's the more? God and his kingdom and his people. So we'll take what we have and give it up for something that's more important to us and the kingdom is the highest priority to us. And then they fall behind it. It's an honor to sacrifice for Christ and his church. That God says, he says, whenever you give, he said, you're storing up treasure in earth. He said, don't worry about earth. I got that taken care of. But when you get to heaven, man, there's just wealth for you there that he's storing up. I love that. Something else about my church, I want you to know that serving is a priority. We, we, we just, with eagerness, what do we do? We take our time and talents to care for each other. We just serve. We, we just, we're eager to help. We're, we're not spectators who sit in a seat. We're, we're not idle, meaning I'm just going to show up at church. And then I'm just going to leave, and I'm, I'm not a part. Our people don't do that. Our people get involved and take care of other people's needs, finding ways to serve and are eager to do it. I want you to see this verse, and you may never have thought about it, because sometimes when we look at ourselves, we kind of have a low view of ourselves saying, I have nothing to offer. But that's not what God says about you. Let me show you this in 1 Peter 4.10. He says, God has given each of you, so now it's personal to you, from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Remember, we talked about God's goodness and abundance that he has. He has a great variety of spiritual gifts, and he gave one or multiple ones to you. Okay? Yours isn't mine. Mine may not be yours, but each one has it. And then he says, now use them well to serve each other. It's like God gave you um, a giant gift. I'll, I'll call it a million dollars. He said, now I didn't give that to you for just yourself. I gave it to you to give away. But a million dollars is a lot of money kind of easy to hold on to it kind of easy way to go lock it in a closet so nobody gets it but God intended for you to give away and he's like why are you worried about a million I got gazillions uh, more and by the way I can print more you know and so he, that's cool thing about being the creator he can he can just print more of them he said no I, I've, I've given them to you to use now go use your gifts to serve people now, some of you, uh, and, and the Bible uses, God uses this example of a body to help us understand. He said, now, some of you are a hand. Some of you are a hand. You're, you're supposed to do this. But a hand is not the brain. The brain has its function, but the hand has its function. If the hand tries to be the brain, it's going to do a bad job. It's not going to work right. Some of you God made hands not meant to be a brain 
Some, some of you are a feet, or feet. Feet don't smell. Oh, some of y'all are going to catch that later. Oh, my God. Okay, there, there's like two or three of you caught it. Feet don't smell, but feet smell. Oh, y'all, oh, my God. We need to get some coffee up in here for y'all. Lord have mercy. Okay. All right, but the feet isn't the nose. I, I know it was a bad one. Uh, and the nose isn't meant to run. I told you. It's been a month. It's been a month. Sorry. Anyway, my point is each of you has a function. And at my church, people take the gifts God has given them and they use them. By the way, let me just highlight, we've been talking about our food pantry. Let me highlight uh, a couple areas that, that we could just use some of you who are built this way. Uh, we could use some, some of you to go love on our children in the zero to five area. Yeah. We need some of y'all to go take care of those precious children. Some of y'all have children in there right now. And there's people who love on them, show them the love of God, just pour into them. We could use more in there. We could use more in there. Uh, we could use some teams back in our sound booth that does such an amazing job just making sure things are done so well. Uh, we could use some back there. Some, some people kind of get scared of both those areas, but some like for our sound booth area, I'm like, I can't do that. It's not that hard, and they'll teach you everything you know, need to know, but we need people back there. And, and, and I, I'm just letting you know, we need you. We need you. If you've ever, just even, if you ever operate an iPhone, you can go back there. You can go back there. We'll, we'll teach you how to do it. But that's a couple of areas. If, 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 you're, if you have that, we could use you. But I love it at my church. People don't just sit down. They get up and they serve one another. At my church also, I want you to know this, is that freedom is a priority. Freedom is a priority. And, and I love that, that God has helped us find uh, true, the true experience of freedom through Jesus. But I love how we don't hoard it. We help others find it. You know, we worked real hard with our free indeed. And look, there are testimonies after testimonies after testimonies of what God has done through free indeed. And so I want to put this slide up that promotes our next one in September. I want you to put the dates down. If you have not been through our free indeed, please don't miss what God wants to do. Does it take an investment of time? Yep, a Friday night and all day Saturday. But it is worth it. I promise you. I promise. It is life changing. And if you need to go through it again, hey, go through it again. But get the word out. I'm letting you know these dates now because I'm encouraging you to go invite other people. We know people that could use that. And so what we want to make sure freedom is a priority here. We want others to experience it. We don't want to hold it for ourselves. And we certainly don't want to miss it for ourselves. But God has helped us have true, true freedom. And we want to help others get it. At my church also, I want you to know this is that community is a priority. Community. And when I talk about community, I'm talking about the community we live in. We live in. And, and what we do is we've chosen to compassionately care for those around us, but we don't expect anything in return. I don't care if they ever come to church here. Love to. Hope they do. Would love to have them. But we may not be the church for them, or it may, may just kind of be part of their journey. But that's not our condition. We're not going to say, come sit in a service to get food. We're just going to say, here's food. We'll let God take care of the service, the, them coming to service part. He loves them way more than we do, by the way. We're, we're just the hands and feet of God just giving them stuff. Uh, but we're not going to expect anything in return from them. We're not looking for anything back. We're not looking for a thank you. Uh, we're just going here. We love you. God does too. And we just want you to know it. And we're going to show it in a very tangible way. Here's some saltine crackers. <laughs> by the way. Uh, for some of you who really want to do this, some of you know somebody in need. We actually have six boxes of food left over from our food distributions. We'd love for somebody to take one of those, uh, six families to take one of those, and go intentionally take it uh, today or this week and bring it to a family that you know could use some food. Uh, w being in the food line, we hear the, the stories, tough stories out there, tough, tough stories. Some of you know them. Uh, and that box of food is for you, have it. Have it, take it. And so we'll have, we'll have plenty more coming in. And by the way, also, on this, the food pantry is also for our church. If you're ever in need, don't, don't, don't be embarrassed or ashamed. There's nothing wrong. We all have needs. And look, there's times I ask, all, all, I ask people all the time because I'm not good at much. And so I need help. So I have no problem asking because I'm going to blow, I'm going to mess it up if I do it. So I'm like, please come in here. You know what you're doing and take care of it. Let's not be ashamed to ask for a need. We're family, by the way. 
There's no judgment. There's no criticism. There's no, well, why are you in that situation? I care less. Just here. You need it here. We'll give it away because we love you. I want you, to have, I want you to think of this thought. God has strategically placed you and me here for a reason. And I'll tell you something about my church. If you go look on a map, we're almost dead center of Livingston Parish at a major crossroads that's a, that is an access point for all of our parish to go to different parts of the parish or even other parishes. It's a cut through from Ascension to here to go to Tangibahoa and, and back and forth. You think God knew what he's doing when he put us here? You think it was just kind of random that this church popped up here? I don't think so. But I also don't think it's random that you and I are here. I don't think we just happen to be in church together. I think God knows what he was doing, and he strategically did it for a purpose. For a purpose. You know, Jesus was strategically placed on earth for a time. And, but I want this, and I'm going to tell this story because I want you to catch some few things I'm going to highlight after I read the verse. It's, it's in Matthew 9, 36. It says, seeing the people. Seeing the people. He felt compassion for them. Because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Don't you think that describes the world we're in right now? But Jesus chose to do something. And he looks at disciples and he says, man, the harvest is plentiful. But the workers are few workers are few it's a problem there's so much so much harvest out there there's not enough workers so he says beseech the lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest so he's telling the disciples this and i, and I think what he was doing what was giving them a mission that 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 he was he was showing them hey i want you to see the need but i want you to go to god saying we need to send some workers out there I need, I need you to, to, to just see this. Why don't you all put up Matthew 9.38 for me. And I want, I want, as you look at this verse, I want you to realize you're the workers. We're the workers. God has strategically placed us here for a reason. We're the workers. We don't need to cry out for God beseech the workers. We're already doing it. That's what we do. We take care of of our community. I listened to one of my favorite pastors. He was a pastor uh, years ago uh, at another church with me. Actually, uh, helped me in my journey. But, but he shared this thought, and I'm actually going to have a quote in it, uh, in a sermon he did. He said, for some people, church has become a gathering group. And look, we do gather. It's important we gather. But that's all it's become. But our church is more than a weekly gathering. It's for a weekly going. In other words, the way he said it is we gather to go. It's not we're gathering for gathering's sake. We come, we get what we need, but then we take what we've got and go because God's given us more than enough. It's going to overflow. Let's go pour it out on people out there. And then he made this very powerful statement that he said, we never reach what we do not see. Now, he gave an interesting example, which I've experienced. Have you ever been pulled out of a parking lot trying to get onto a busy road, and nobody will let you in? And look, traffic stopped, and they won't let you in. And here's, here's what mo most people do. Will they even look at you? Because if they look at you, now they have a decision to make. They have a problem. So it's like they know you're there, but they're like, oh, text message. Hmm. What's that over there? Hmm. I've never seen that before, though I've seen it a hundred times. But wow, look at that. Oh, green light. Some of you have done that. <laughs> Some of you did it this morning. Oh, my God. I was trying to get in, and you wouldn't let me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, but I want you to see the power of this statement, and that's why I wanted to share it with you. Let's go back. Y'all don't, don't need to show it, but remember what Jesus said. He said, seeing the people. What Jesus chose to do was stop and look. 
But once you see them, you, you're now you've got to do something about it. Or you've got a choice. At my church, we see the need. I want to show you a picture. This is from uh, Wednesday. What I don't like and what you don't see in this picture, and it's hard to see, in the upper right-hand corner, you see at the end of our driveway where it meets South Frost Road. There's cones blocking the road, blocking the driveway. No more could come in. Well, you didn't see what I saw as cars being turned away. What you didn't see is there were cars who actually parked by our pond hoping they could sneak in. One of them discovered my little trick is driving across the field, which I like doing in my little camera. I got an off-road camera. It's pretty cool. Um, and I go hit the bumps and, and all kinds of stuff. Well, they saw me do that, and I watched them come drive in our grass, and they parked out there by, one, by the telephone pole just hoping to get a moment to get in, to sneak in. And they did, and they were able to get food. You didn't see what I saw. People turned away. I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with this site saying we have food and people can't get it. That's not what happens at my church. But you see, my, my church is going to make sure we never do that again. And when show, somebody shows up for food, we're going to take care of them. And the last thing I want you to know about my church, and the most important, because some of you are going, well, something's missing. God is a priority. He's our first priority priority and we desperately long for him and what we do and this is if you look in your handout one of our, our first value is we create a setting where God is is welcome because we never want him to leave and so we do things that he loves being here with us and we also create a setting where people can experience his presence his power and his worth his word that, that brings real change in our lives. We create that setting. We're not punching a ticket. We're not saying, yep, got my time with God on Sunday morning. No, we're experiencing God on Sunday mornings in all of his fullness. I showed you eight things. I could, I could spend a lot more time telling you about my church But let me read a verse to you that I hope describes my church. And I hope we get to hear one day in realness. It's in Matthew 25, 21. It's where the master had given his servants. He was going away for a while. He said, I'm going to entrust my responsibilities and my treasure to you. And then the master comes back a time later. And two of the servants did well, and one didn't do so well. I hope we're one of the servants that did well. And here's what he said to them. He said, well done. You good and faithful servant. You didn't have a lot. I didn't give you a lot. I just gave you a few things, but boy, you were faithful with them. Now I'm going to give you more. See how you know you've done a good job? God always gives you more. I want you to know we've got 10 acres of land. We've got room for more. I think there's other opportunities that we could do that God would give us more. But he's saying right now, I'm giving you, my people, I'm giving you an opportunity to do a food pantry. Will you take care of it? Will you feed my people? And I wanted to look down and go, well done. Just well done. You didn't have a lot. Little church, Mill Livingston Parish. People know you because you're right by the stop sign. But you let people know about you that this is where the love of God is. And we're just going to take care of people. We're going to love them right where they're at and help them in their journey. Well done. I want you now to come and share your master's happiness. I want to hear Jesus say, well done. I don't want to hear him go, well, you're done.
Here's the definition of church for you. It's God's people in uncompromising unity. In other words, we don't let anything come between us. We don't let the petty things. We're not always going to agree, but that's, we're not going to let that call it divide us. And we have loyal love. The Bible uses a word called loving kindness, but it's this gr- a Hebrew word called hesed, which means loyal love. That's what we have here. It's not a service. It's not a 10 a.m. Sunday service. It's not a building at an address. It's not an organization that's a corporation. No, it's God's people. And this next thought I want you to catch, and God intentionally put us together to accomplish great things together. It's his mission on this earth. And my church is your church, by the way. And my church is you. You're my church. You're my people. You're the ones, Aggie, and I love dearly. You're the ones, Aggie, and I hope we get to spend the rest of our lives with. It's us. Now, a lot of times I end the service with some questions, and I have you bow your head. This time I want your eyes wide open. I want you to look at the screen. Because I'm going to put the eight things that I talked about, about my church up there today. I want you to see these. And my question to you is, do your priorities match your church's priorities? I describe my church to you. Do those eight words describe you? You're the church. It's not the church in Livingston. It's not a big tan building. It's not an address. It's not a corporation. It's you. It's my church. Do you look like our church? Some of you today, you just need to take a next step. Some of you go, you know what, I've been coming to church, but I kind of come in each week like I'm just, I, I got to show up. I'm, I'm going to get some enthusiasm when I show up. And you know what, I'm going to go find somebody to talk to. I'm going to be hospitable. I'm not going to find my chair and just plop down in my chair, just my spot, and I'm just going to sit here. And then complain when nobody talks to me. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to find somebody. I don't know them, but I'm going to find out their name. I'm going to be friendly because that's my family. And I'm going to get engaged. I'm going to start spending time with my family. I'm going to get to know them a little bit. They're new to me. But I'm going to spend some time with them. And you know what? God's given me a lot. And I'm just going to take some of them, and I'm going to start being generous. And you know what? I got some extra time. I got some stuff I can do. I can, I can help around the church. Boy, I'd love to be free. <laughs> you know what? I see my community. I've been ignoring them. There's some people I've been kind of seeing out of the corner of my eye. I, I've been turning my head to make sure I don't see them. I'm going to start asking, how can I care for them? What can I do? We'll start coming helping out with the food pantry. Just once a month. Give some of my time to make sure people get fed. You know what? I need to make God a priority. That's our church. My second question is, you tell others about your church. Would you do it? There's some people who need to know about us. They know who we are. They don't know us. Why don't you tell them about our church so they know, so they can experience God in a very dynamic way and let him change their life just like he's changing yours, just making it better. Then my third question to you, some of you today, especially on the God factor, you may go, you know what? I've never had a relationship with God. I've gone to church before, sitting here today, but I've never had a relationship, but I want it. It's like I feel God reaching out to me right now. Now I'm going to get everybody to bow your head and close your eyes. If you're home, with nobody looking around, some of you today say, you know, I'm ready to make that decision. I'm ready to be a Jesus follower. 
I'm ready to start doing things God's way. And if that's you, I just want to pray for you. This, this is very private. This is a private moment between you and God. Baptism, which we're going to have a little bit later with somebody. That's the public time. This is a private moment. So I'm going to ask everybody just not be looking around. But if that's you in this room, you say, you know what, I'm just ready to, ready to have a relationship with the Lord. I want to pray for you. And so just so I know who I'm praying for, if you just raise your hand up for me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you in the back. Thank you in the middle. Anybody else? Thank you. I see you in the middle. Anybody else? Thank you. I see you back there. Thank you. Wow. Father, you see the hands. You see uh, people now making a decision for you, oh God. Lord, I'm asking you right now, as they're making this decision, and Lord, you just walk with them. Show them who you are. Lord, the first connection is with you. It's not even with church. It's with you. Lord, help them this morning to connect with you in a real way, that you are their Savior. And they follow you with their whole life. Just pour into them, protect them, oh God. Surround them with godly people. Open up their ears to hear your voice so they know you, oh God. Provide for their every need. Lord, let them see you at work at every point of their life, oh God. Just walk with them. Lord, I just bless your people, oh God, today. Lord, I'm so thankful for my church. Lord, thank you for an opportunity. I just get to brag on my church. This amazing church where you place us. Lord, I love going to look at other churches. That's so fun and interesting. But this is my home where you're doing amazing things. And I love it, oh God. I'm so grateful that you placed my family here in the best spot that you could around the greatest people we've ever known. And Lord, as they've been so good to us, Lord, I just, I declare and bless them with all of your goodness and all of your love and all of your grace. And I declare the name of Jesus over every single one of them. We love you, oh God. We honor you. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, come on, won't we give God the very best hand clap you have. Love you guys. God bless you.